With all ingredients for a control system available and tested, it is time to learn how a quadcopter moves through space with your inputs given to the radio transmitter. You already know how to control the motors with your TNC, how to measure the rotation rate with a gyroscope, and how to receive and read commands with your radio transmitter and receiver. These are all essential ingredients, but you still need to learn how they have to work together to be able to fly. The first thing you need to understand is how you can use the four motors of your quadcopter to steer it in the directions you want. You can do this by changing the power and thus the rotation speed of the motors. Let's assume a perfect world for this video. No wind disturbances, instantaneous motor reaction and a uniform weight distribution. To let your quadcopter hover in the same position, each motor will have to work at around 50% of its power as shown on the figure. To increase the altitude at which your drone is flying, you simply increase the power of all four motors to, for example, 75%. In order for the quadcopter to stay level, it is important that all motors increase their power at the same time. The command that keeps all motors at the same power level to control the altitude of the quadcopter will be called the throttle input. When you want to change the direction of your drone, things become more tricky. Assume you want the drone to stay at the same altitude, but move sideways to the right, which is a roll around the x-axis. The throttle input will be equal to 50% for all motors, as you do not change altitude, but in order to initiate this sideward movement, the power output of the left motors, which are motors 3 and 4, should be higher than the power of the right motors, which are motors 1 and 2. This means that you need an additional roll input, which will lower the power of the motors 1 and 2 with, for example, 25%, and at the same time increase the power of motors 2 and 4 with 25% as well. With the same reasoning, you can estimate the motor power for a pitch movement. In this case, motors 2 and 3 will need to work harder than motors 1 and 4. Just add 25% power to motors 2 and 3 and subtract the same amount from motors 1 and 4. The final possible movement is a yaw turn around the z-axis. In this case, the motors that spin in the same clockwise direction should reduce power. This might seem counterintuitive, but the resulting torque on the frame is always the opposite as the spinning direction of the motors. When the motors spin in a clockwise direction, you will get a counterclockwise torque on the frame. Therefore, to do a yaw turn, you should reduce the power of the motors 1 and 3 and increase the power on motors 2 and 4. A nice property of this definition for the throttle, roll, pitch and yaw input is that you can write all movements as a linear combination of each other for all motor outputs. The output of the motors first consists of the throttle input, which is the same for all motors and used to reach a certain altitude. Next, you add or subtract some motor power when you want to perform a roll movement. For the pitch movement, you will subtract power from motors 1 and 4 and add power to motors 2 and 3. And finally, when you add the yaw rotation, it are motors 1 and 3 that need to reduce their power while motors 2 and 4 increase it. Adding all these parts gives the necessary motor output when you want to increase altitude while simultaneously performing a roll, pitch and yaw movement. The resulting motor output is very simple. Motor 1 shouldn't be powered while all other motors should be fully powered. In reality, you do not send a power percentage to the ESC, but rather a PWM value between 1000 and 2000 microseconds, where 1000 microseconds corresponds with 0% motor output and 2000 microseconds corresponds with 100% motor output. In your flight controller code, the throttle input will vary between 1000 and 1800 microseconds to leave 20% motor output available at all times for rolling, pitching and yawing. You can write this example in a more general way 
by using equations in which the output of each motor is a linear combination of the throttle, roll, pitch and yaw inputs. The only thing that changes in each equation are the plus and the minus signs. Now the throttle input ranges from 0 to 80% and the transformation to microseconds is very easy. For the roll, pitch and yaw inputs, the story is a little bit more complicated. The receiver sends commands to the microcontroller that vary between 1000 and 2000 microseconds according to the position of the radio transmitter stick. For the roll, pitch and yaw sticks, whose default position is physically in the middle of the radio transmitter at 1500 microseconds, you need to transform the PWM values to physical rotation rates. This has to be done for the desired roll rate, which is given by channel 1, the pitch rate, which is given by channel 2, and the yaw rate, which is given by channel 4. You can choose your maximal and minimal desired rotation rate. The higher the values, the more agile your drone will be, but also the harder to control. For now, take the limit values of 75 degrees per second and minus 75 degrees per second. The transformation from the PWM rotation rates is then visualized by the line on the screen together with the corresponding linear correlation. Now you might think a second transformation is necessary from the desired rotational rates to the motor input. This is true, but it is very difficult to measure which rotational rates correspond to a certain motor power level. Moreover, even if you obtain accurate data for this transformation, a huge problem remains. The reasoning in this project holds only for a quadcopter in a perfect world. In the real world, you will have small disturbances, which will have to be corrected immediately by varying the output of each motor, depending on the disturbance. As you are not able to model or predict the disturbances, you do not do a second transformation, but instead you will rely on corrections made by your fast microcontroller and a technique called PID feedback control. This PID control will be the subject of the next video. Thank you for watching this video and do not forget to subscribe if you want regular updates on the new videos in this series.